घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरे कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी आर बिलवेड घनश्याम महाराज द पाथ मेकर टू आर लिबरेशन आर डियर पूज्य गुरु जी पूज्य संतो एंड ऑल वी भक्तो जय स्वामी नारायण Ever since the establishment of Loya Dham, Pujya Guruji has given Loya Dham Parivar one sutra, or you can say one quote. I'm sure many of you, many have heard of it. I'm sure that you've even maybe heard a little bit more in depth about what it is. Each and every organization has a slogan behind, you know, their whole scheme. may it be a fast food company may it be a battery company may it be a car or may it be any kind of product a sales management you can say technique is to put a catchy slogan on each of their products so that public can be attracted by it this is a norm this is a this is a very very uh, common in society and nonetheless from each slogan people become attracted and become pulled towards that item or object as i was stating loyadam parivar and our puja guru ji lives by one statement and off of that and off of that we would like to conduct um a small you can say lecture presentation regarding this very topic today's presentation would like to introduce to all of you is maru laksh loya dham i'm sure many have heard of this whole quote and this quotation is very very famous in our parivar but what is maru laksh loya dham what is how is it famous what's the what's the difference between uh, maru laksh loya dham and different what is maru laksh loya dham in society and how does puja guru ji perceive it what is his vision behind maru laksh loya dham and what does it exactly mean maru laksh loya dham these are simple gujarati text maru meaning my laksh meaning goal loyadam meaning loyadam loyadam is just not an organization but it's actually you can say a franchise name in society it has this weight it has this kind of you can say walk to it that makes it different from other organizations so my goal is loyadam that's our topic for today let's take a little bit look in depth of uh, first and foremost by the grace of maharaj and our puja guru ji what is loyadam over well, loyadam is a remote village located in gujarat india where bhagwan swami narayan sanctified it with his presence that is why it is considered a dham dham meaning an abode or a divine place let's put it that way loya is the name of the village <clears throat> where bhagwan swami narayan 230 years ago in his travels went there and sanctified the place stayed there and performed many leelas which we'll see in the near future but more so it's a dham it's a it's an abode it's not in an ordinary place because bhagwan swami narayan resided there and presently bhagwan swami narayan is residing there in a divine form so with the help of technology and google we would like to take a look at exactly where the location of loya is as you can see there in the bold amdavad and rajkot and vadodara are very very um highly profiled cities in the state of gujarat india Now Loya is in the middle of nowhere let's put it that way it's a very very remote village where you can see uh Sarangpur where Kashtabanjan Dev Hanuman ji is present currently 
from there it's approximately I want to say two hours but this village of Loya is very remote and you'll take a look right here thank you again to Google Maps and from there this is the whole village itself Loya village is right there on the outside territories and outskirts of the village uh, there's farmland um, which farmers go every day and take care of their farms crops animals so on and so forth but I've heard many many talks that Loya in Loya there are many many people that have not even stepped five kilometers outside of the village and have been born in Loya and have died in Loya they have not seen a single city in their life they have not seen technology they have not seen many crowds of people they have not seen high sky-rise buildings that's how remote of a village it is the reason why I'm pointing out this statement is so that you can get an idea that the location of this place is very very remote so as you can see there's an arrow that's pointing to the Hariman they're currently located in Loya which Puji Guruji um, has renovated and by Sadhguru Sri Yoganand Swami this mandir was constructed approximately 150 plus years ago and Nan Santo uh, studied Sanskrit there in this remote remote village uh, by the Agna of Maharaj and Sadhguru Senior Santos so there is Gansha Maharaj residing there very very beautiful Murti just like this Gansha Maharaj here but by the inspiration of our Puja Guruji this temple is running very well and you can see that you can see a drone video here. Yeah. There, that's the location of Sudakacha's Darbar um, and the highest pinnacle point in the village, besides the temple and construction that's currently happening. But that's the overview of the village of Loya that we just saw. Now, when we go inside of the village and we go inside of the Hari Mandir of Loya Dam, you see Sudakacha's Darbar. Sudha Kachar was a great bhakta of, of Bhagwan Swaminarayan who had a friendly nature nonetheless who was very very highly inclined to Bhagwan Swaminarayan and performed his upasana was an, is an anadi mukta of Bhagwan Swaminarayan and but he was such a bhakta that the relationship that Sudha Kachar and Bhagwan Swaminarayan had was compared to Brahmanan Swami's and Bhagwan Swaminarayan's relationship Nonetheless, Sudha Kachar was a genuine devotee. And this is his whole, you can say, Darbar where Bhagwan Swaminarayan lived here um, when he came. And you can see it's is as it is. Um, it's very, very uh, old, but yet it's very, very prasadino. That's what makes it completely different from the world. If we go and compare it to a mansion and we compare this building, there would be no price on this building because Bhagwan Swaminarayan, the Supreme Lord of Lords, came here and completely purified this place. That's why this Prasadino place is very divine. And even by having the darshan of its roof, Nadia, what it's called, in this whole building, our eyes will be purified. And let's take a look at the whole village uh, inside. Surakachar is by. It's very renovated now. And you can see there on the right side the treasure chest. That is the Prasadini treasure chest, which was stolen but was returned again. Um, it's a Leela of Sudakachar and Bhagwan Swaminarayan. Inside, you can see here it's decorated uh, very nicely of uh, Bhagwan Swaminarayan's pics of uh, different Leelas that he performed in Loya. Moving on. 
Now, right on the right hand side, which we did not see, is this beautiful tree. And underneath this beautiful tree, you can see uh, there's an elevated platform and there is a hole there. That was used as a stub um, by Bhagwan Swaminarayan when he performed his famous Leela of Sakotso, as all of you know. Sakotso Bhagwan Swaminarayan performed for two and a half months here, staying um, in Surakachar's Dilbar and fed made and fed thousands of bhaktos and santos and devotees and from there the shock which had no value brinjal at its or eggplant baby eggplant which is what we call in english which has no value bhagwan swami Narain gave it value instantly by cooking and even till today loyadam parivar here in Loya Dhamparivar Santos, by the inspiration of our Puja Guruji, cook such kinds of uh, uh, saks um, and, and serve it to Hari Bhaktos. And um, from there, uh, this tradition continues onwards. So, this tree is very, very famous because Bhagwan Swami Narayan wanted Limdo in Vagar, which is a type of leaf. And uh, he pulled on one of the branches. And this tree is actually, you can say, bitter. But Bhagwan Swaminarayan pulled down the leaves and threw it in the shock. And that whole tree branch became sweet, uh, the, the leaves from it. And that's the story behind it. That's why this tree is a mukt. Even Puja Guruji and Santo, when they go there, they perform dandvats, this tree. Because inside of the tree, there is an atma. And this Atma is very, very lucky, fortunate, pious that it sat or it gave shade to Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And Bhagwan Swami Narayan actually touched this tree. And as you can see here in the picture, Bhagwan Swami Narayan performing his famous Sakutso Lila. Many, many Santos helped out, as you can see. And Bhagwan Swami Narayan, one by one, uh, made big, uh, you know, made socks in these big pots and fed it to thousands of bhaktos. Nonetheless, moving on. Now, on the left side of the darbar, you can see is this Hari Mandir that we were talking about. It's a beautiful Havili style carved mandir, which currently right now, uh, Sankyogi, meaning female uh, saints live there and take care of Gansham Maharaj. On the right side, you can see is a white chatri, or a white, you can say, shrine. Um, right there, in that very spot, Bhagwan Swami Narayan spoke his 18 Vachnamruts, Prasadina Vachnamruts in the village of Loya, which we are very, very fortunate to have. And that place is a place of remembrance that Bhagwan Swami Narayan spoke the Vachnamruts here in Loya. Now let's take an overview of the video of Loya, um, the Hari Mandir right here. And inside you can see the Deri or the shrine right there. We're hovering right above the whole Mandir. A beautiful, beautiful scene. And it's the highest pinnacle of the village as the flags uh, are right there. Inside the mandir, as you can see, it's a Haveli type, a beautiful type of uh, carved beautiful mandir. And inside of the mandir, there is Gansham Maharaj. You can take a peek right there. That's the beauty of the mandir. And this is the Chatri that uh, we just spoke about, uh, that Bhagwan Swami Narayan performed his Vachnamrut. Now, Vachnamrut Vivechan was spoken here that's why this picture represents and as you can see our Adi Guru Sadhguru Muktanan Swami is there uh, verifying the text that Sadhguru Muktanan Swami, Sadhguru Gopan Swami, Sadhguru Nityanan Swami and Sadhguru Shukanan Swami wrote um, and that's a very very beautiful image there a wish Loyadam is dear to Maharaj and through his wish a mandir is being constructed now the story goes is that as that at that time, when Bhagwan Swaminarayan came to the village of Loya, he saw a high rising, uh, you can say elevated uh, land. And Bhagwan Swaminarayan prophesied that in the future, a great mandir will be built there. Now, this was 230 years ago, not any time here in the soon, or it wasn't like 5, 10, 15 years ago, but our Puja Guruji 
I want to tell you first, let's take a look at the whole Mandir and I'll also narrate with that. This is the Mandir construction. I mean, this phase, this video is a couple years old, so the elevation is actually not higher and even marble columns have been installed in the Mandir. And from there you can see a beautiful elevation. This Mandir is 225 feet wide and 250 feet uh, in length and 111 or 108 foot in height. Um, which is very, very massive. Uh, so massive that it is going to be the number one highest and biggest mandir in uh, uh, Gujarat state. So Pujya Guruji's wish and mission, his, his each and every breath is for Loyadam. Now, going back to our story, Pujya Guruji had a dream. And that dream was of Bhagwan Swami Narayan showing Maharaj or showing the whole mandir to, Ma, uh, to Guruji and telling Guruji to build the mandir in that elevated place. Now this dream was approximately 15 years ago, but right after Guruji woke up, so he wouldn't forget, he drew the whole sketch line out of the mandir and from there it came into blueprints and from there it's coming into reality as you just saw in the video. So due to uh, Maharaj's inspiration and grace our Puja Guruji is currently building Loyadam Mandir in India which is a pure white marble the highest of its type which will never break and which will never never become yellow uh, even for hundreds of years so this beautiful Mandir is being made and our Puja Guruji's wish and main mission is that he wants to take his each and every breath for Loyadam and as Loyadam Parivar Bhakto, this should also be our wish that each and every breath should be for Loyadam. Because Loyadam is the center of Agna and Upasna. Sadguru Gunatitanan Swami says in his talks that Agna and Upasna are the two wings to Akshardham. Now, as you can see there, a bald eagle um, which has very, very long wingspans uh, let's take the right wing to be Agna and the left wing to be Upasna and these two wings are the wings to Akshardham now what is Agna and what is Upasna Agna is following the commands of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and his Ekantik Satpurush commands in the form of the Shikshapatri commands in the form of, of the Satsangi Jivan commands in the form of the Vachnamrut but Agna is very, very important because by following Bhagwan Swaminarayan's Agna, Bhagwan Swaminarayan becomes pleased. And Upasna is the form of worship, the mode of worship. To understand Bhagwan Swaminarayan to be the Supreme Lord of Lords, beyond all avatars and incarnations and deities and everyone, and worshiping Him, singular devotion. Bhagwan Swami Narayan seated in the middle in Akshardham and all the muktos there worshipping him engrossed in his murti which is currently the situation in Akshardham and in reality that's how it is so this form of worship Upasna and Agna these are the wings of Akshardham going to Akshardham and Loyadam is the center of these two wings Moving on. Pravurti that liberates countless souls. As you can see, Swamiyan Guru Kukandari, Loyadam, Swami Narayan Sanskarpit, Nauli, Loyadam, and Loyadam, Florida, Loyadam, New Jersey, Loyadam, Macon, and Loyadam, Vadodara. All these centers have different, different kinds of Pravurti, which completely uh, changes the whole mode of each and every person's thinking and guides each person towards the path of liberation. Now moving on, what does Loya, Maru Laksh Loyadam mean? What does Maru Laksh Loyadam mean? Now, I gave you a simple definition that my goal is Loyadam. That's the simple definition. But what does it mean, mean in the eyes of Maharaj, in the eyes of Puja Guruji, in the eyes of Santo? What is the meaning? What is, what is the hidden meaning let's say that let's say that so our role <clears throat> the renovator of loyadam puja guruji's wish 
for uh, us all is to melt. Melt meaning become humble. Maru Laksh Loyadam means to be humble. Dasna Das. Hari ke das ahi das din ke das ahoi kar. Chad kapat karna nash varth nash da hoi kar. Dasna das thai ne vadi je rahe sat sangma. Bhakti te ni bali shamanish rachi shatena rangma. Maharaj says this that those who become hungo, humble, I stay with them. Even in the Vachnamud Gadada first chapter 58th Bhagwan Swami Narayan states to become a firm staunch devotee one must believe and understand oneself to be inferior and everyone else to be superior to them this is the very statement that Bhagwan Swami Narayan has spoken and in many many prasangs Bhagwan Swami Narayan has shown that the way of humility is the true way of, of satsang and is the true way of attaining moksha and liberation so our puja guruji also implements this point das na das become humble become humble in front of maharaj of course everyone would do that become in, uh, humble in front of the satpurush of course everyone would do that as well become humble in front of santos bhaktos would do that but also become humble in front of each other bhaktos that is difficult to do because where there is same level, that very factor becomes different. One has a nature of competing, another person has a nature of become egotistical, being egotistical. All these different natures collide and due to that, humility does not or sprout. But Bhagwan Swami Narayan's simple message and Maru Lakshloya Dham's simple message is to be humble. And where can we find the best example? Of course, our Puja Guruji. Let's take a look at this video here. A Puja Guruji doing such kind of seva. This is in the village of Loya right now. And Guruji right now is, uh, you can see they're digging and, 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 and cleaning up the roadside. Guruji is not even wearing anything, no, no slippers, nothing like that. But at the age of 62 and at such heights of spirituality um, in doing such kind of seva really shows that this is the true way of obtaining Bhagwan Swami and his Rajipo. And this is the true way of, of attaining the Rajipo of Santo and Bhakto. And Puja Guruji is not doing this for any kind of, you know, other, you can say, intention. His sole intention is to please Maharaj and Guruji and Santo. But Santos must have had a camera there, so they caught this whole scene of Puja Guruji doing seva and cleaning, uh, cleaning uh, the roadside. So we are very fortunate to have such a humble Satpurush. And Bhagwan Swami Narayan says in the Vachnamrut Panchada 5th, Putting conceit aside, meaning ego, behaving as a servant of servants and becoming humble is the only appropriate behavior. Is the only appropriate behavior. Think about it. Bhagwan Swami Narayan puts that weight on the only appropriate. So what does his what is his vision? His vision is for each and every bhakt to be dasna das, to be humble. And through that Bhagwan will become happy. Brahma Nanda Kahere Am Samje Jet Jana Sura Tanakari Nakere Guru Vachane Chure Chura. Brahmanan Swami says in his Kirtan Harijan Sachare that one should completely melt one's body, mind, soul. We can take everything in this context. In the words of the Satpurush, whatever the Satpurush says, one should turn one's life, mind, soul towards that direction. Suppose it's daytime and the Satpurush says it's nighttime, then one should go to sleep. Suppose it's nighttime and the Satpurush says it's daytime, then one should wake up. These are the kinds of concepts that make one ekantik and make one go to Akshardham. According to the Vachnamud Gadada 1st chapter 60th only who, one who is Ekantik can make another Ekantik. 
So following in his commands, following in his footsteps, becoming humble and, and bowing to him according to Sadhguru Gunati Tan Swami is the very reason of satsang and due to that satsang, one attains Akshradham. Moving on. Submerge oneself. Let go. Let others go ahead. Submerging oneself. This is very, very difficult to do. But if we want to become dear to Maharaj and Puja Guruji, if we want to understand and imbibe the concept of Maru Laksh Loyadam, then definitely sub submerging oneself is definitely something to do. Meaning, what is that meaning? Letting others go ahead. Well, you're not going to physically hold someone, but one might perform such kind of acts where others' um, work or others' activity might be broken or might be shattered. That is not the way of Loyadam. That is not the way of Maharaj. That is not the way of Puja Guruji. That is not the way of Santo or Bhakto of Loyadam. We want to let each other go ahead. We want others to become greater we want others to become more and more better and that is the whole purpose of submerging oneself and letting others go ahead moving on to become useful help others selflessly puja guruji his whole life has become useful he has given his body his mind his soul to loyadam parivar bhaktos to santos and day and night even till this day is putting an effort to make satsang a better place, to make all bhaktos and santos better in each way, form, to make them ekantik. That is the whole purpose of Puja Guruji's, you can say, you can say existence of coming on this earth. But to become useful and helping others is a characteristic or a virtue of Aloya Dham Parivara Haripak. To become dear to Maharaj and Puja Guruji, definitely. If we want to become dear to Maharaj and Puja Guruji, we will have to completely develop proper character. Proper character in the form of Dharma, Bhakti, Gnana, Vairagya, Mahima, Prem, Nishta. All these different modes of, you can say, elements that a, a staunch devotee needs. Niyam, Nishe, Paksh. All these kinds of elements that Bhagwan Swami Narayan wants from us, which we can find in the Vachnamrut, or by associating with Puja Guruji and Santo, we can understand concepts. Developing such kind of character will take one to Akshradham because Bhagwan Swami Narayan likes living with those who have the same nature, nature to Bhagwan Swami Narayan. It's very simple. If we live in a house and we live with our wife, children, no problem. We understand their nature. We like their nature. They like our nature. But suppose we call some stranger from the outside and tell them or he wants to come and live with us. Now, obviously, we have to see his credentials. We have to see his background. We cannot just let him in. But suppose we let him in because we have compassion. We feel very, very pity for him. When we let him in, we see his nature is completely different from us. We do not eat meat, he can't live without meat. We do not drink alcohol, he can't live without drinking alcohol. We speak in a polite manner, he can't, he can't speak without swearing. All these different natures that he has, so we kick him out of our home. Because our natures do not match. In the same way, to go to Akshradham, Bhagwan Swaminarayan's divine abode, we have to develop a nature and character, character which is similar to Bhagwan Swaminarayan's liking. That is the only way that he will keep us in his home, or else he'll be like, "Smells bad here. Please go," and he'll remo remove us from his Akshradham. That's why. We have to develop a proper character so we can live with Bhagwan, play with Bhagwan, sleep with Bhagwan, eat with Bhagwan, do everything with Bhagwan. And Bhagwan wants this to happen, but that can only be possible by performing Sansamagam. 
The next purpose of Maru Lakshloyadam is Atma Buddhi and Santo and Bhakto. Atma Buddhi meaning <clears throat> a minus, but just like how we have a minus for this body. For example, if someone were to come and slap you over the head or take your ear and twist it, you would definitely feel pain and become aggravated. That is Atma Buddhi in the body. We believe our body to be so much of ours that if there's the slightest bit of pain or aggravation, we become frustrated and disturbed. That same kind of Atma Buddhi we want to develop in Santo and Bhakto, meaning the Ekantik Satpurush and his Bhakto of Loyadam Parivar. When that minus happens, then everything else will happen. And according to Bhagwan Swaminarayan's Vachnamud Vartal 11, Bhagwan Swaminarayan states that <clears throat> when one develops Drad Priti, meaning Atma Buddhi and Drad Priti are one thing, then three things happen. Number one, Atma Darshan. Number two, God Realization, Bhagwan's Darshan. And number three, the Satpurusha's realization. All of these three things happen just by developing Atma Buddhi or, or having Drad Priti for the Ekantik Satpurusha. Then why not do it? That's my question. And as you can see in the smaller text, Punja Bhakta, Muktanan Swami's person. One time Muktanan Swami <clears throat> was on the riverbanks and he had just performed his bath and he was about to wash his clothes <clears throat> but before that he dried himself off and he was putting his uh, new clothes on and Punja Bhakta comes and picks up Swami's dhoti to wash in the river Swami says what are you doing what are you doing he says I want to perform your seva Swami I'm just washing your dhoti Swami asked are you, a, are you a karma yogi or are you a saink yogi meaning are you a householder or are you a, a tyagi, a renunciant? He said, Swami, I am a householder. I am a karma yogi. Swami said, put it down. Do not touch my dhoti. I'll wash it myself. You are unpious. And due to that one very statement, Punja Bhakta thought that I do not have or I am not fortunate enough to wash Swami's dhoti then what good is this household life? And right there and then, Punja Bhakta left his household life. And, and, and due to that, he was able to live with Maharaj and Guruji and Santo just because he could not wash the dhotyu of Swami. He had so much mahima, but he was not able to. This is the kind of Atma Buddhi that we should have as Loyadam Parivar Hari Bhakto. I am Loya Dam Parivars and Loya Dam Parivar is mine. Just like how we say, I am this body and this body is mine. Or I, uh, I am this person's son and they are mine. Just like that, we should have this minus for Loya Dam Parivar, which is a family. Parivar meaning family. Family looks out for one another. Family takes care of one another. Family is always trying to strive for the best of each other. And if that kind of mentality is developed, then all of the characteristics of submerging oneself, letting others go ahead, becoming humble, Atma Buddhi will develop right away. Because all of these characteristics are of a family. Moving on. One should keep such association by thought, word, and deed only with God or His Bhakta, meaning the Ekantik Satpurush, as it leads to the liberation of one's Jeev. But Vachnamnud Gurira, 1st chapter 78. Bhagwan Swami Narayan says to associate with His Bhakta by a thought, word, and deed. These are the words of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Thought, meaning whatever, whatever uh, we think we should always you should uh, filter it through God and his bhakta word meaning speaking of the qualities the good qualities of Maharaj and his bhakta meaning the Satpurush indeed is doing what Maharaj and Pujaguruji Santo say 
When one does this, then liberation is guaranteed. Listen to Kathavarta, read Sampradayik scriptures, and perform Sant Samagam. Definitely these three factors are a very, very pinnacle point in becoming a strong, firm Hari Bhakta of Loyadam Parivar. Listen to Kathavarta, number one. Kathavarta is such an important factor that Kathavarta is like a mirror. It shows us our faults. Without it, we would not be able to accelerate or even go forward in satsang. No matter how much seva we do all day running around in mandir, without katha varta, it's not possible to understand Bhagwan Swaminarayan's philosophy, Bhagwan Swaminarayan's wish and intention, and to develop meima of Maharaj Guruji Santo and Bhakto. It's not possible. Katha varta meaning lectures or spiritual discourses. Number two, read Sampradayik scriptures. Sampradayik scriptures meaning in this Sampradayik, Bhagwan Swami Narayan has established the Shikshapatri, the Vachnamrut, Satsangi Jivan, Nishkuran Kavya, Bhakta Chintamni, etc. so on and so forth. We should read them and imbibe whatever is stated by Bhagwan Swami Narayan and his Nansanto in our life. And lastly, the most important factor that will take one to Akshardham the master key, the key which is cannot be replicated, cannot be broken, cannot be melted, the key that works for all doors, the key which is hidden yet open, the key which is invisible yet visible, Sant Samagam. Brahmanan Swami says, Santa Samagam Kije Nishadina Santa Samagam Kije. Perform Sant Samagam day and night, night and day. Sant Samagam meaning association with the Satpurush and his Santo. Sant Samagam meaning becoming one with the Satpurush and his intention. Sant Samagam meaning understanding the intentions and principles of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and his Ekantik Satpurush. By doing Sant Samagam, by performing Sant Samagam, and you don't have to physically come, talking over the phone, Zoom nowadays through technology, all these different mediums are ways that one can attain and perform Sant Samagam and attain Bhagwan Swaminara and the the master key. So, in the end, we saw the whole perspective of Maru Lakshluya Dham. Bhagwan Swami Narayan, due to His grace, due to Puja Guruji's grace, due to Santo's grace and all of you Bhakto's grace, these are the points that I thought would be very, very important for this whole quotation, Maru Lakshlo Adam, and what it means for us Bhaktos to strive forward and reach Akshara Dham. As Loyadam Parivar Bhaktos, we should definitely understand these points, imbibe them in our life and move forward on the path of liberation. Puja Guruji has a goal and we should help in attaining his goal. We should become a person who should put one brick in but not one, take one brick out. That's the type of mentality that we should have. And due to that, by following this one small quotation, Maharaj and his Ekantik Sat Purush will become happy and from there one will be able to reach Akshradam. Saying this, my humble Jai Swaminarayan.